Hello everyone, hope you're having a great day and welcome to today's little lecture video in genetics. Today we're going to be going over chromosomal rearrangements and talking about the last one finally, which is on translocations. So let's hop down just as a reminder, talking about chromosomal variations in chapter eight here. And right now we're focused on the different rearrangements. Then we're gonna talk about the aneuploides in the following videos, followed by the poly. So we talked about three types of rearrangements so far. As a refresher here, we talked about duplications. That's when it's doubled. Uh, deletion is when we lose part of the chromosome. And an inversion is when part of that chromosome is reversed by 180 degrees. So watch the previous episodes if you need to catch up on those. Today we are focused on translocations. So translocation is when part of a chromosome is moved to a non-homolog or a different location on that chromosome. So what does that mean? So we have two different chromosomes. You take a section from this one and a section from this one and switch places from them. You pretty much do crossing over between non-homologous pairs, um, so different chromosome numbers. So I, I made this little uh, representation here to explain how these translocations work. So here are, let's say this is chromosome number 15, and this is number six. These aren't supposed to exchange pieces with each other. Now, here they look like they're the same size and same distance. It's just, um, it's an artistic representation, so don't think of it like that. Uh, but here, let's say this section here exchanges with this section right here. So they switch spots. And this isn't supposed to happen. You're, you don't want the wrong genes on the wrong, you're, you don't want the wrong genes on the wrong chromosome, pretty much. So that switching now, Number chromosome 15 down here now has a piece of chromosome number six on it. And chromosome number six now has a section of chromosome number 15 on it. Um, so again, this could, we'll talk about the various effects that this could cause, but I just want to give a little brief introduction to what a translocation is. And these can happen. There are a few, uh, a few certain diseases that we're going to talk about where it actually does happen. So there are three different types of translocations. The first type of translocation is called a reciprocal translocation. This is when both chromosomes exchange equal amounts of material with each other. And I said equal amounts. It doesn't necessarily have to be equal amounts of material. It can be differing amounts just between two different chromosomes. Now, a non-reciprocal translocation, this is where one chromosome exchanges information, but the other one doesn't. So there's no exchange back from the second chromosome. It's just a section is given to another chromosome. And the last kind of translocation here is called a Robertsonian translocation. Now, Robertsonian translocation, we're going to talk about it in more detail down here, but it's when you have two chromosomes that go through this exchange, and so there are two acrocentric chromosomes. And so when two acrocentric chromosomes exchange, the two little knobs, the Q arms, come together, and they're actually lost in the process, and then it forms a very large metacentric chromosome. So you lose some genes, you lose the two um, knobs in the process. So here, this is easier to explain in this figure down here. So right here, uh, this one is showing a Robertsonian translocation. So again, these are two acrocentric chromosomes because they have the two small knobs up here. Now, there's typically these knobs, they might have genes. Typically, there's not a lot of genes in these knobs. So when this translocation takes place, these two pieces come together, forming this larger metacentric chromosome. The two knobs would then be together as well, but these are usually lost in the process. Um, so the Robertsonian is technically a reciprocal translocation. It's just specifically called a Robertsonian if it's this style. Whereas a reciprocal translocation here is just what we were just talking about above. Two exchanges between these two regions right here. And then so yellow comes onto the blue part. And then the yellow part goes, this blue part comes over here onto the yellow. So now what are the effects of these situations happening? Um, so the first effect, you can form new linkage groups. So what does that mean? It means when these regions join right here, this could form a new linkage group right there and have different genes interacting with each other now, next effect here is our positional effect. So again, it depends on what 
chromosome it goes to, where it goes on the chromosome. So expression may be locus dependent. So that could vary depending on chromosome to chromosome, gene to gene, and so forth. Uh, and the last one here, the genes may be disrupted or new genes could form. So depending on where this breakage happens, you could form a new gene right here in this region. So that combination of you know, DNA coming together could form a completely new gene, a hybrid gene in a way, or the chopping cut a gene in half and then it's no longer going to function. So you could have random things like that happen. There is one example I wanna talk about today of this happening. So here the example is chronic myeloid leukemia. You might see it's abbreviated as CML. So it's a type of leukemia. This is actually a translocation event between chromosomes 9 and 22. Now what happens with this one, so this one's the one where new genes may form. So what it does is it kind of disrupts two genes and forms an all-new one. So it merges two genes encoding an oncogene. So an oncogene promotes cancer. Um, P210 is the name of that specific gene. So what happens here, so here's chromosome 9, here's 22. You have, we have a translocation event that occurs between the two where they switch places and they, it forms this smaller chromosome right here. It says PH, this is known as the Philadelphia chromosome. You might see it referenced as that every now and then and, and it forms this longer arm right here. And also this is the notation on how this is written. So 9Q plus 22Q minus T not, so there's a translocation between nine and 22 and then the genes are Q four and Q11, so on the Q arm. So where we're focused right here is this BCR-ABL gene hybrid that forms. So it forms this BCR-ABL hybrid right here, and this fusion protein of them being made together is an oncogene and promotes leukemia. So nice little figure here showing how that happens. And an example of, you know, a new gene, or not necessarily a new gene, it's two other genes coming together and forming an oncogene. So another example of translocations I want to talk about and to end today's video is familial Down syndrome. Um, so this one's different than normal Down syndrome that you think of with trisomy 21. Same in regards to trisomy 21 and three number 21 chromosomes, but this one is heritable and so it can be passed down through generations. And this one's caused by a translocation event. I know we haven't talked about aneuploidies yet. They're coming up next. So we'll talk about Down syndrome again. Um, but here we'll talk about this one while talking about translocation. So this is only 4% of the cases. The majority of the cases are from that non-disjunction in meiosis that we're going to talk about in a future video. One of the next couple videos. Um, so this is, again, a Robertsonian translocation between chromosomes 21 and 14. So Robertsonian means the short arms are lost. So if we're looking at this image down here, so here's chromosome 21, we lose the two little knobs that would have formed here. So the other 21, number 21 chromosome moved up here to chromosome 14. Now this is a balanced translocation. So this individual has the right amount of genes. This individual is normal. This individual doesn't show the you know phenotype of Down syndrome because still, one, two. It has two number 21 chromosomes, not three. However, the situation with this is that there's a chance they could pass this to their child if they have kids. And there's a small percent of chance of that and also a um, chance of having um, higher risk of abortions because of how the gametes could form in this process. Well, gametes and then how the zygotes could form. So, Again, 15% chance of having a child with Down syndrome here. So I'm not going to go through the, you know, the crossing um, and how these gametes separate just because that would take too much time to draw it all out. But I do want to show the possible zygotes that this person could form. So zygote is the fertilized um, egg then. So it doesn't just show this individual gametes. This is the zygotes, remember. Now these are the ones that could form. Uh, first one here is a translocation carrier. So this would be 14, this would be 14, here would be another 21, and then this would be a 21. So this person again would be normal and they'd be similar to this one right here. So this individual could make their same situation again. Then here's, they could also make a normal individual. So here's uh, two 21s 
and here's two 14s. So again, normal individual, and then this person wouldn't be able to pass anything down. This individual right here, though, would have Down syndrome. And they're like, what I say, a 15% chance of this occurring. Um, so here's a 21, here's a 21, and then here's a 21. So there is a trisomy, and that's what causes Down syndrome. So that's three pairs of, or no, well, three chromosomes of a particular number. Um, and then there are two 14s, so that one is technically normal there as well. So this ch child would then have Down syndrome in the normal phenotypic of, um, effects that Down syndrome shows. Now, three of these situations that could form of these zygotes, unfortunately, would become aborted. Um, so there's a monosomy 21 that's not viable, so still chromosome 14 is fine. Another option is trisomy 14. This is three number 14 chromosomes and two 21 chromosomes. So unfortunately, this child would also end up uh, being aborted. And then a monosomy 14. Monosomy is a single chromosome. So here's monosomy 21. Here's monosomy 14. And then there are also two number 21 chromosomes. Um, so again, all of these would, uh, wouldn't survive, but these three possibilities would survive. So I made this figure quick because um, I had, didn't find a good um, free version of it. So I hope it's easy to understand and uh, you can understand the zygote formation here. But I just wanted to give a couple examples of these translocations to focus on the significance on some certain diseases. So next video, we're going to be going into some of the significance of chromosome rearrangements and talk about color um, vision formation and how it color vision, how the trichromatic vision evolved because of a duplication event. So we're going to talk about the significance of that, and I wanted to make that its own separate video. I was going to include it in this one, but I wanted to include these two disease examples um, to better understand these translocations. So that's all I have for the video today. I hope you learned a lot about these translocations. Like always, if you have questions, feel free to let me know in the comments, and I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. But if not, Hope you enjoyed this and I will see you all next time in the next video. All right. Hope you have a great day and bye-bye.